that you'd not only dress us and possess us, but that you would saturate us and that the habitation of heaven would clothe us. Clothe us, Master. Clothe us. As we continue to drink from your throne room, open eyes, open ears, and open hearts that they may see through the physical they may see all the way through. I ask today, Lord, that not only illumination come, but revelation. So there be a self-examination and where we stand. Lord, any of us that's out of position, reposition. As we forgive and bless all those who persecute us, use us, speak against us, and don't understand us. So we cast our cares upon you, we commit to you our works, and we acknowledge you in all of our ways. We take your training manual, your word, as truth, as eternal, and as guidance. So let your word dwell on us richly today, Master. Richly. As we drink of your spirit and eat of your word, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Turn to your neighbor and tell him this is your day. <laughs> yeah. Glory, glory. Second Timothy chapter three. Second Timothy chapter three. Hallelujah. In verse 1, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1, glory to God. But know this, that in the last days, how many of y'all know we're in the last days? Amen. Amen. The next event, which is associated with the feast of the Lord, and if you're a believer and you don't know the feast of the Lord, you need to. It's vitally important to know what God feasts are. There are seven major feasts. In fact, there's only seven feasts of the Lord. Each feast has associated with a visitation and an event. These are called the feasts of the Lord because they're his feasts. You can go to Leviticus 23. Also in the prayer booklet, the penetrating prayer booklet, it has on the back the feasts of the Lord. It tells you what the sequences are. The feasts of the Lord are vital. Many believers don't understand because in the Feast of the Lord, these things are not only an invitation in the area of participation, but understanding what things have been fulfilled. So we know that the four feasts have been filled already. The Feast of Passover, the Feast of Unleavened, the Feast of First Fruits, and the Feast of Pentecost. There's another feast getting ready to happen. It's called the Feast of Trumpets. So don't be dismayed when the Lord puts the Mr. Trumpet in office. Hello? And in these feasts, the Feast of the Trumpet is actually the removal of the body of Christ from the earth. So God is saying, get ready, because that's the next feast to be manifested. He will come. He will not touch the earth, but he will ascend. He will descend into heavens. And people will see him, and he will call those who are dead up from the graves, although they'll actually come with him, to get a glorified body. And those who you and I are alive still, in the twinkling of an eye, will be changed on our way up. And the rest will be left. All those who do not produce the fruits of righteousness. So good people don't go home. Only those who produce the fruit of righteousness. Amen. It's un we must grab hold of this. Because we are in the last days. We are seeing many things happen. We must be careful. I heard the Spirit say today, he said, because we talked about there are those who are biblical believers and cultural believers. And, and in this, 
There's that area where people, there are those who live in this realm who want to get all they can out of life instead of get all they can out of his life. Those are two different characters of Christians. Because when you're trying to get all you can out of his life, it's different. It's totally different. But see, there are many who are still living, cultural Christians, still trying to get all they can out of this life instead of his life. And God is trying to bring his people back into that place. He's calling us back home. He's calling his people not only back to himself, but back to his house, back to his will, back to his purpose and preparation for departure. Amen? See, if we're not back to those places, we miss departure. So we know that we are in the last days. Now look at this. One of the things that the enemy always tries to do, I'm gonna, you're going to probably hear me speak about this more and more and more, disconnect. If the devil can get you disconnected, he can access you. Does everybody understand? He's always trying to get us disconnect because when there's a disconnect, we go astray. We follow another path. And let me tell you, the worst thing that can happen to us is to be successful in the wrong assignment. Amen? Know this in the last days. Perilous times will come. All kinds of things are happening. We're seeing more earthquakes. We're seeing more devastations. We're seeing more addiction. In fact, 80% of all narcotic prescriptions in the whole world are in the United States. Think about that. You don't think the enemy wants to destroy this country? It's the number one country besides Israel. Amen. Israel is the number one country he wants to destroy. But the United States is the next country he wants to destroy. Why? Because we're established by God's hand. It says this, for men will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money. Look at the first thing, self and money, self and money, self and money. Because the world, the ruler of this world operates and controls things by money. That's why oil is called black gold. And who owns all the oil? Satan's kingdom. There will be boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. In other words, they want to get as much as they can out of their life, out of this life, instead of out of his life. They have a form of godliness. Oh, there's all kinds of deities out there that are false. There's all kinds of religions. There's all kinds of things. There's all kinds of belief systems. There's many people who just believe, well, I'm a Christian, but I can just, you know, I just believe. I don't believe the Bible. I just, well, then you're an idiot. Because if you don't believe this, you're lost. Living outside of salvation's truth. Lost. There's a form of godliness. You know how many believers are caught up in new age? New age. They don't even realize they're copping on new age movements. It says, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Well, where does the power come from? His presence. His presence. His presence. And from this, and, 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 and he says, from such people, what? Turn away. Turn away. In other words, don't be yoked with them. Because they'll drain you. Amen? For this sort of those who creep into households and make captives of gullible men and women, load them down with sins and, and, and led away with various lusts, they're always learning and they're never able to come to the knowledge of the truth because they cannot get free. They cannot get free. They go in cycles all the time. Why? Because they live in the outer court instead of the holy place. Now Janus and Jebus resisted Moses, so these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifested to all, and theirs also was. 
But you have carefully followed my what? Doctrine. Come on, read it with me. Manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Icium, and Lystra, which persecutions I endured. And out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will what? They're going to suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will what? Grow worse and worse. Are we in that time right now? Yes. Deceiving and what? Being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures. Now childhood for me and you is to be born again. So since you've been born again, we should be knowing the Scriptures. Amen. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, of knowing from whom you have learned them and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to what? Make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in what? Righteousness. Remember, we must be producing the fruit of righteousness. That the man or woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Again, last days, people will get more deceived and manifest fruits of ungodliness. They'll be promoting the kingdom of self influenced by Satan's kingdom. Now, the kingdom of self is also known as the matrix. There's three kingdoms. There's the kingdom of self, the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of Satan. I want to go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Would you read the first verse with me? It says, now what? The Spirit expressly says, in other words, he's expressive, he's enforcing, he wants us to pay attention. He says, look, at now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter time, some will what? Depart from the faith, taking heed to what? Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. In other words, they're going to be easily deceived. They're going to try to live their life and get as much out of this life for themselves instead of his life. Amen? And there'll be a disconnect. These individuals are disconnected. One of the things the enemy always wants to do is try and get us disconnected. And disconnect starts with inside. It says, speaking lies and hypocrisy, have, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry. And commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. So there will be those who have known the truth have been swayed. They've actually no longer. They're living for themselves now instead of living for him. Amen? Many depart from the faith, become disconnected in the spirit. In fact, there's people who have never been connected right from the beginning. Always living in the outer court. Has everybody got it? So they, they're always trying to maintain salvation, but there's never really connect inside where it's father, son, father, daughter. Where there's that connection. There's a connection that we make in the spirit, and it only can happen is when you're clothed with the spirit, filled with the spirit. So that we're connecting and bring heaven here on earth in us and through us and on us. Revelation 17. How many of y'all know that the enemy wants to get you busy? He wants to get you so busy, there's no connect. See, the busier you get, the less connected. Does everybody understand? There's an area of being busy for the kingdom of God, but most people are busy for themselves. Because they're always living. They're, they're trying to get everything they can out of life. They want to visit as many places that they can. They want to do as many things as they can. They want to take as many trips as they can. They want to do all kinds of things. Spending more time to fulfill and get as much out of life instead of get a life out of him. Is everybody okay? 
I mean, there's nothing wrong with trips, amen? I used to do a lot of tripping. I never even left my living room. But praise be to God, God rescued me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Revelation 17. Listen, you never know what's going to come off this pulpit, I'll tell you. <laughs> We're not religious, are we? Amen. Hallelujah. In verse 1, would you read it with me? The one of the seven angels who had seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold, precious stones and pearls, having her hand a gold cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. In other words, understand that the world system is a Babylonian system now. It's ruled by Satan's kingdom. And one of the things he's doing, he's getting people drunk in deception. People are actually drinking deception and don't even know it. They're worshiping Satan and don't even know it. They listen to all of this garbage secular music that floods them. So see, when you listen to worldly music, which the source of Satan's kingdom, then you drink of him and you become more drunk, more deceptive, more delusional, become more blind. Everybody okay? Verse 6, And I saw the woman drunk with the what? Blood of the saints and with the blood of martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. Why? Because Satan's kingdom is out to kill, to shed blood. That's how they open dimensional ports. The more human blood they can shed, they can open a dimensional port and allow more demonic activity in. But the angel said to me, why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her which has seven heads and what? Ten horns. Again, people are drinking of deception, worldly lusts of selfishness, positioned in the matrix of the kingdom of self. It is a maze of no escape. There's no escape out of the matrix. Only through Jesus. That's the only escape. So see, Satan's kingdom releases all these other gods, all these false deities, and it just brings self righteousness and false worship and keeps people staying, living, breathing and in bondage and prison in the maze of the kingdom of self and they can't get out because only through Christ Jesus. Now, you can be in the self, in the kingdom of self, in the matrix, in that maze and call on the name of Jesus and he will guide you out but you must follow him out. Does everybody get that? That's why the word believe means to what? Follow. So you must follow him out. That means that you must cooperate with him to get out. Or you stay stuck. Ooh. No escape except for by being led by the Spirit of God. Amen? That means we and I must be filled with the Spirit of God. We must be clothed with the Spirit of God. And we must be drunk in the Spirit of God. You must love his presence because if you don't love his presence, there's something wrong. Amen? Amen? And it needs to be taken care of. Galatians chapter 5. Glory. Glory. Living, walking 
and acting in the Holy Spirit, saturated by God's presence, always filled with his joy. No matter what's going on, it don't matter. Hallelujah. In verse 16, I say then what? Let's, let's speak it. I say, then walk in the spirit and you will, shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, what's the lust of the flesh? First of all, lust means overwhelming desire. So that means there's an overwhelming desire. You know, people just work in the world to get as much as they can out of their life. Is everybody with me? So they do everything they can. They save for retirement. They save for this. They save for that. They all kind, They live to get as much fulfillment out of life as they can instead of fulfillment out of his life. Is everybody okay? This is called deception. Again, there's nothing wrong with having fun. I'm going to have fun in this life, but I'm going to do it in his life, in his presence, not in the, in the worldly presence. It's different. I say, then walk in the spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so you don't do the things that you wish or desire. Why? Because your flesh is always trying to desire something else, isn't it? The powers of darkness. We are being influenced every day. We are being bombarded constantly from, from moment to moment. Every single day, every moment, you and I live in a place where there's nothing but pressure and bombardment of demonic forces. That's why you, it's our responsibility to change our atmosphere. We change it by getting filled with God, dressed with God. Amen? And anointed by God. Oh, hallelujah. In verse um, 18, what does it say? But if you're what? Led by the Spirit, you are not under the law of judgment. Now the works of the flesh are what? Evident which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you before, and just as I told you in time past, that those who practice, those who practice, those who practice, those who approve of such things will not enter the kingdom of God nor eternal life. But I'm a believer. Well, you can't be if you're doing these. Because if you're doing these, you're not producing the fruit of righteousness. Amen? If you're producing the fruits of flesh, you're not in position. Is everybody okay? It says this now, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit, and let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. In other words, stay drunk in the Spirit, meaning stay filled. This is called spiritual drunkenness, just in case you want to know the title. Spiritual drunkenness. That's what we do every Friday night. We get drunk glory spiritual drunkenness see now the world wants to get you drunk too don't they so people are either drinking of the world or they're drinking of God the spirit 2 Corinthians 4 hallelujah 2 Corinthians 4. Verse 1. Spiritual drunkenness. The world goes down to their local tavern and bar and restaurant that produces alcohol. People say, well, alcohol is all right, you know. Jesus drank. No, he didn't. Jesus didn't drink anything fermented. Hello? So, well, he hung out and he drank it. He didn't drink their garbage. In fact, when he went in to change water into wine, it was actually grape juice. 
I won't even go. You know, people go to, I, I, if, you, if you've ever gone visiting somewhere and you go into a church and they pass around wine, I won't take it. What's part of communion? No, it's fermented. If my dad didn't take anything fermented, either will I. Hello? Praise God. Verse 1, let's speak it together. Therefore, since we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. For we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing because they've been disconnected. So the ruler of this world blinds individuals. Why? Because he causes them to drink of deception. Whose minds the God of this age has what? Blinded, who do not believe or follow, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord our, and ourselves, your bondservants, for Christ's sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Yes. Maybe of God and not of us. In other words, the God of this world, which produces death, gives the drink and food of deception. The true eternal God gave his blood and his body. Amen? That's why those who eat and drink of his blood and his body or his spirit and his word have eternal life. But the world is drinking of deception and still drinking of deception. In Ephesians chapter 5. You know, when people are struggling, they try to fix it themselves. You know, if we would start running to the throne instead of the phone, we'd get fixed. It's his presence. That's what we're looking for. That's why people get high. Amen? That's why people drink of the world. They're trying to feel good. Because we came from a place that was great feel good. We felt great when we were home. Amen? You know, doctors will offer you feel-good pills all the time. Just because the world approves it doesn't mean we should approve it. Amen? Hallelujah. Ephesians 5, is everybody there? Everybody okay? In verse 8. Uh, verse 6, I'm sorry. Therefore what? Ooh, let no one deceive you with what? Empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness. Hello? All goodness and righteousness and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but what? Rather expose them. For the shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then what? That you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Anybody know the days are evil? Yeah, very much. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation. In other words, it causes you, the worldly causes you to drift away from God. It causes disconnect. People that drink get disconnected. Do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. 
speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for the things of God, for the, uh, the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the what? In the fear of the Lord. Be drunk. Be dr Let me tell you, when you're drunk, you want more. Romans 13. One of the things the enemy always tries to do is get us soulishly, keep us in a soulish arena. Soulish, 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 not spirit. In fact, there are some people that their soul speaks louder than the voice of God. And it will stop when we stay connected and we are drunk in the spirit. Because no other voice is an opportunity to speak. It can only slur. And the only voice you hear is God's voice. If you're truly drunk in the spirit. Because the soulish arena always wants me. Me, 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 me. Mine, mine, mine. Verse 11, Romans 13. Is everybody with me? Let's speak it together. And do this knowing that the time, that now is high time to what? Awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. So what do we do? How do you put on the Lord Jesus Christ? You put on his presence. Amen? Second Corinthians 5. One of the things that begins to happen is the enemy begins to cause disconnect where there's more fulfillment in the things we do instead of in his presence. Does everybody understand that? That causes disconnect. If there's more fulfillment in what you're doing instead of what in his presence, there is definitely a disconnect. I can only share that as my own experience. My fulfillment is his presence. Nothing else fulfills me. I do what I'm told I'm supposed to do it and I get back in his presence because that's my fulfillment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 1. Let's speak it. For we know that our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed. <clears throat> is destroyed. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is what? From heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but what? Further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home, in the body we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be what? To be well pleasing. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your conscience. Whoa. Everybody cool? Being clothed with his presence of glory. Dressed from heaven, drunk in the spirit. Drunk in the spirit. You know, let's go to Psalm 63. 
We ask, desire, and seek. Amen? When you seek, you what? You find. Now, if you don't have a desire, then you ask for the desire. Does everybody understand this? If you don't have the desire, you ask for the desire, and God will give you the desire. If you have the desire, you ask for more. So that means that you're going to seek. That means you've got to press through. You've got to press through all the stuff of the world. You've got to press through, and you've got to leave yourself and get into his presence. Because you can't take yourself in his presence. Yourself gets out. Self lives in the outer court. But in the holy place, there's a separation. In the most holy place, there is no self there. Everybody okay? Are you getting this? In verse 1, let's speak it. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as the marrow is with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches, because you have been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. But those who seek my life to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for the jackals. But the king shall rejoice. The word king means warrior. For the king shall rejoice in God. The warrior shall rejoice in God. Are you a warrior? Yeah. Amen. And all the upright in heart shall glory. Oh, sorry. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who what? Swears by him shall glory. But the mouth of those who speak lies shall what? Be stopped. Again, this is powerful. Here's an individual that is desiring, asking, and seeking. He's seeking. What's he seeking? He's seeking God's presence so he can get filled, get dressed, and stay drunk. Spiritual drunkenness. Because when you're drunk, you don't care. Amen? You don't care. Desire, ask, seek, or ask for the desire, and then seek. In Gen Genesis chapter 3. Genesis 3, verse 6. Let's speak it together. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desire will make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were what? Naked. Naked. What happened? They were clothed with God's presence. It lifted. Now they were naked. Now their eyes were on themselves, weren't they? Instead of on the Lord. And they sowed fig leaves. Together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day because they no longer saw him. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The Lord called to Adam and said, where are you at, Adam? Of course, he knew where he was. And Adam said, I heard your voice in the garden because I couldn't see you anymore. And I was afraid. Adam never knew what fear was. He was afraid, I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And the Lord said, who told you that you were naked? The serpent. Because the serpent unclothed them. And the serpent is still unclothing God's people. He's still having them drink of deception where the presence of God gets removed from them. 
They still call themselves Christians, but they don't realize that they've been disconnected. I'm a Christian, but you'll know them by their fruit. Amen? Is everybody okay? Revelation 3. Revelation chapter 3. Spiritual drunkenness. Produce righteousness without the habitation of God. You cannot produce holiness without the habitation of God. You cannot produce the fruits of the Spirit without the habitation of God. You cannot overpower your enemy without the habitation of God. Is everybody with me? But I know the word. Many people live out of their mind instead of their spirit. Or many, you know, remember the mind is associated also with the soul. Amen? In verse 17. Revelation 3, verse 17. He says, Because you say I'm rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and what? Naked. Why? Because the habitation of his presence, God's presence is gone. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be what? Clothed. And that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. See, the enemy knows. The powers of darkness know. They know whether you're, the habitation of God is on you or not. Why? Because that's all it takes is touching something or agreeing with something that's displeasing to God and it lifts. As many as I love, I rebuke and chase and therefore be zealous in what? Repent. Repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and him with me. And to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. Revelation 16. And the word says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And in his presence is fullness of joy. Amen? Spiritual drunkenness. In verse 12, 16, 12. Let's speak it together. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of what? Demons. Performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world. To gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who what? Watches in what? Keeps his garments. Lest he should walk naked and see his shame. God requires me and you to not only be dressed, filled with the habitation of home. That's why we want to be spirit. That's why it's important. As much worship, that's how you get dressed and filled. Worship. Amen? Would you turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4? In verse 1, let's speak it together. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know that what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your what? Sanctification. Only his presence. The spirit is the one that brings sanctification. Knowledge does not bring sanctification. Only God's presence brings sanctification. That you should abstain from sexual immoral, immorality, that each of you should know how to what? Possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust 
like the Gentiles who do not know God or disconnected. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also forewarn you and testified, for God did not call us to uncleanness, but to what? Holiness. And therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit, his presence, habitation. 1 Peter chapter 4. Spiritual drunkenness. If you haven't been to a Friday night service, I welcome you. It's an opportunity to lose yourself. In verse 1, let's speak it together. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the loss of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of Gentiles when we walked in the lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these things, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel is preached also to those who are dead, that they may be judged according to the men in the flesh. But we but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be what? Serious and watchful in your prayers. First Thessalonians chapter 5. In verse 1. Training for reigning. Let's speak it. Now, but concerning the what? The times and the seasons, brother, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then what? Sudden destruction comes upon them. As labor pains upon a pregnant woman, they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are sons of the light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet of hope for of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. And I want to close in the book of Jude. Oh, it's good to hear the pages turning on the Sunday morning. Jude 14. All right. That's where we're going to start. <laughs> There's no chapter 14, okay? Amen. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Book of Jude? Amen. Now, Enoch the seventh from Adam, come on, read it with me, prophesied about these men also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lust. They mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ, and how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who, walk, who would walk according to their own ungodly lust. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit. But you, beloved, 
building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, which is tongues. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to our God, Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever and ever and ever. Spiritual drunkenness. Stay filled. Stay dressed. Stay possessed. Amen? With God's presence. Don't let anything disconnect you from that. Walk away from anything that will disconnect you from it. You know, one of the things that happens also by being clothed with that presence and being drunk in the spirit, you become that witness. You're not ashamed to give your testimony. You're not ashamed to tell anybody where you've been and what God has done for you. You're not ashamed. If you are, you're disconnected. Amen? Amen? You're not ashamed. I don't care where God sends me. I don't care if it's a judge, whatever. I'm going to tell them what God has done for me, what I used to be, and what I am now. Amen. Never be ashamed. Amen? Amen? Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we give you all glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your mercies and your grace. Lord, dress us, possess us. We want to stay drunk in the spirit, that we continue to drink from you. Be filled with you. Be clothed with you. With boldness. With power. With strength. With compassion. With your love. And with your resurrection power. Be released so that your kingdom can be manifested in us and through us. For the, everyone to see you. Because you're looking for you in this world. In your people. In Jesus' name.